Hey guys, so this is an impromptu filming session because um, Lee's just taken my house to see Godzilla. Couldn't be less interested. Could not be less interested. So I thought I would film a little video for you guys this morning since I've got time. It's Saturday morning. I never film stuff on Saturday morning. Um, but I want to talk about the stuff that I've been really, really enjoying recently. It's going to kind of be a full face of favourites, but not entirely. Um, because it's kind of a new thing for me to come back to the beauty stuff as hard as I have. Um, I was thinking about like picking stuff out and thinking, oh, I really like that, I really like that. Um, and I've decided I'm gonna, basically just gonna show you everything I'm really, really enjoying right now. And this can kind of stand as a, this is everything. And then from here, all of my favorites will be, oh, okay, so now she's preferring that, or now she's preferring that. But this is kind of an all encompassing base of favorites. So um, I'm not, are you gonna do a primer? Okay, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna use the chill, setting spray as my primer. This is definitely one of my favorites this month. I'm going to go and purchase another one of these is from Urban Decay. I've actually had this forever, um, forever, forever, <laughs> longer than I should have. What does it say? Six months, definitely longer than I should have had it. Um, I actually had this so long ago. You may remember if you've been following for a long time, I did a whole thing. I was like desperately trying to find products that would um, sound up to the heat and it might have been five years ago. That's horrifying. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be buying another one of these anyway. Um, but I like that because it is cooling. I think more cooling than the other setting sprays that I have. It's supposed to be, but sometimes it's just a gimmick, right? Um, but I like to apply it halfway through my makeup, which you will see, because I don't like what a setting spray does as a finishing product. I just bought a, a setting spray from Primark, actually. Let's just put some stuff on my face, shall we? I can talk as I do that. Um, Fit Me Matte and Poiler, Poiler. Fit Me Matte and Poreless. And this is the shade, this is 115 Ivory. I think we can all agree this has never been Ivory. This is a much deeper shade than Ivory suggests. I actually remember I got this as a PR sample um, in a darker shade. And then I ended up picking this one up because I wanted to wear it in like when I don't have a tan. And it's still too deep. What's that all about? I could really do with getting uh, a paler shade still. Because I, right now I do have a decent amount of colour. I'm considerably lighter than this naturally. So, I don't even know. Ivory, guys. This is not ivory. So I've just picked up a setting spray from Primark. Um, and it's like a mattifying setting spray. I'm very excited to try that. I've never tried a matte setting spray before, which I know, you know. The thing is, I kind of not, not lost my love or fell out of love, but I kind of, I'm going to say I lost my passion. Oh my God, I had so much sleep in my eyes. I've washed my face, I swear. But I did not realize how much sleep I had in my eyes. I sleep hard right now. I'm doing intermittent fasting, which I will talk about in another video if you're interested. I don't want to talk about it from a weight loss perspective. I don't own scales, I'm not measuring myself. I won't be able to really give you any results anyway. But it's supposed to be really great for various other things, um, like bloating and um, some issues that I have, like IBS stuff. Uh, and it's something that apparently doctors recommend in certain situations too. It's an interesting idea and it's not a far cry from my lifestyle anyway. Um, and this is, by the way, I'm not going full days. It's like a few hours a day. It's not, I'll talk about it in another video if you want to. I don't want to like bring it up now because it can be triggering, I realise. Um, but I've been sleeping amazingly well. But for some reason, it comes with a lot more sleep in my eyes. So I've bought this setting spray um, and because I kind of lost my passion for makeup and stuff a little while ago. I still obviously was enjoying it, it just, this is the double wear concealer from um, Estee Lauder by the way. And I just put it right in the corners and then if there is any other area that I feel like I need it, I might put it there as well just to up the coverage in those areas. It is amazing but it's no good on areas where you're going to get kind of lines and um, areas that, areas is my verbal tick of this video. Um, it's no good and, and, the, and the spaces of your face where it might fall into kind of creases or dryness or anything like that, you really want it to be uh, on the, in the places that, I'm really avoiding saying areas, in the places that it's kind of, it can just be. It's got nowhere to travel or settle. Eyes are tricky but as long as you keep it in the corner it should be okay. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of just fell out of it all. 
and that's when all the extra setting sprays became available and it started to be like a real thing. Everyone was using setting sprays. And so for me, there's a lot of stuff now that I'm like, ooh, I've never tried this. And it's been around for a long time, but I've just never, I've never done it. I've taken a break, if you will. I was always doing beauty stuff, but I just wasn't like as in love with it as I feel like I've become again. I was actually toying with telling a story, which I might tell. I might tell you the story right now. Um, a miss for this month, by the way. Oh! The Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. Um, I'm not going to say this is 100% a dud yet because I haven't had it for long enough. Initially I was like, oh this is so cool and it feels amazing, it's very fine and da 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 da. Um, and I actually said in more that it might have only been on IGTV because I've been talking more about things. Like if you're interested in stuff that I'm liking right now, because I tend to film stuff far in advance, especially with the kids being off school, um, I want to kind of be ahead of myself. So I'm possibly like two weeks out at any given time, which means six videos ahead. If you want to see like right now what I'm actually loving, Instagram is the place to be. You don't have to follow me there. This is not necessarily a plug, but if you like that kind of thing, I do do chatty kind of IGTV stuff over there too. So I have already mentioned this, but I said I really liked it and I said that it was very fine and it was great for touch-ups and it didn't get like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say clumpy. That's not right at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, the word is, no, it's gone. Uh, cakey. It doesn't feel like that. It kind of does. It's difficult to blend. It's very, because it feels cold and wet, it's just so strange. Um, because it feels cold and wet when it goes onto the skin, it kind of, it's difficult to blend it because it almost feels like you're dragging water on your, it's weird. I'm gonna talk about it in more detail later when I've had it for longer, but right now it's feeling like a miss. Um, I've gone back to my Vichy Derma Blend, which is one of the finest, the finest powders that you can set your makeup with. Um, but it is a lot cheaper than the Bare Minerals one, which is my favourite favourite. I'm actually going to put on the Urban Decay Chill setting spray one last time before I do this powder. Ooh, it really, really is chilly. So I've been toying with telling a story and I don't know whether or not I want to make it as a separate video or just kind of as a bit of an explanation. Um, it's kind of drama, but it's not drama. And I've avoided talking about it because, well, I just... I don't want to be that person, but also I think sometimes when you're too close to something, it's difficult to have a little bit of perspective. Like sometimes it feels like someone has wronged you and something has, has been done to you or something um, terrible has happened to you. And in reality, it was just a decision. It was just something that was done. It was just something that happened. And later on, you can think, no, that was the right thing to happen. It's just difficult in that moment when you're so angry and hurt to, to not speak through the upset, you know? Um, so basically I was working with a makeup brand and um, there was supposed to be a palette. I've talked about this, I've alluded to this, um, but there was supposed to be a palette and then it never materialized, but it was, uh, it was the way in which it was dealt with. But then I continued to work for the makeup brand in other ways and financially they were very good to me but I was still very hurt by the whole situation of never really having any closure, never really being spoken to about what had happened. And to this day, there was never really an explanation. That being said, I completely think that it was the right move. I don't think I was the right fit. And in my mind, that's where it all kind of started going wrong. When I started working with them, um, that's when I, I just kind of lost my love for all of this. It's I can almost pinpoint it to like the month that that all started happening. And I, it is tricky, but I think I was worried about like what I was talking about. Was it going to be on, on message with the products that I was hoping to launch? It, I just had like a million things in my mind. I can't get enough powder out of this thing. And it was, it definitely affected the way that I felt about this and this, started to feel less like a hobby. I started, I mean, I put a lot of work into the, the stuff I was doing with them. And I, I don't know, I think that is why. That is why I kind of distanced myself from the whole thing. And I think that then in the end, when that all started to go totally wrong, I almost kind of put all of everything in together and I started to hate this a little bit, which has got nothing to do with it. It's very difficult to talk in kind of like vagueness, isn't it? But I may talk about it like with more, I think a lot of you will know who I'm talking about, but I may talk about it in more um, 
specific terms at some point. I just don't want it to be, you know, like a clickbaity dramery thing, but I kind of would like to tell the story because it's an interesting story. It's a nice um, insight, or not nice, but it's an insight into kind of what goes on behind the scenes with some of this stuff. Um, and I feel like now I've got enough distance to really say, I'm really okay with it. And I wasn't okay with it for a really long time. Like it was like, don't, don't even talk to me about it. I was really not okay with it. Um, and I feel like I've kind of come to a point where I've, I've accepted the situation and I'm totally cool with it. But there was a time when if I'd talked about it, I would have just been like raging. But anyway, um, Hula Light, back to makeup. Hula Light, I have been obsessed. This, okay, now I'm wondering, have I used anything that was sent to me? No, no I haven't, okay. This was a PR sample. This was sent to me last year and I only just opened it. Um, I found it in a drawer and was like, oh, Hula Light. I'm loving it, I'm loving it so much. You can build it up. I mean, I have got some color right now. Um, for sure, I would have thought that I would prefer the original for my skin tone right now. Um, on a skin tone, you know what I'm saying, for my tan. Um, and that I perhaps would want this when I was a bit paler, but I love the tone of this. It's completely different to the original Hula. It's much more forgiving. If you're a little bit heavy handed, if you want to build it up a little bit, it's much easier to apply. And I am just really, really enjoying it. Way, way, way prefer it to the original. Um, so I have seen people talk about this who've got very, very pale skin and been like, oh, it doesn't really show up. It doesn't really do that. I don't get it. I really, truly don't understand because I am so enjoying this and I'm considerably deeper right now than those people. So I don't know if they've reformulated it. I don't know if it's like more buildable now or maybe if it was just the tone that they didn't like, but I am loving the light version of Hula. Um, what I have been doing, which I've talked about a little bit in some Get Ready With Me style videos, is the Kevin Aquan Celestial Powder, which is definitely my highlighter of choice right now. It is closely followed by the um, Fenty highlighter, this one, in Lightning Dust. This is a duo, but the Lightning Dust side is the one. So Lightning Dust is here, this is the, is it? Yeah, this is the like sheeny one, and this is Fire Crystal, which is more kind of a frosty. I'm gonna do a whole video on like highlighters and things that make me glow, things that give me that kind of like, oh, I love it, I'm obsessed. Um, whereas the Celestial Powder, I've got this in a little mini, it's from Kevin Aquan, this has got the sculpting powder in it as well, which I'm not super into, um, but the, mm, can't get enough. So I've actually been applying this with what would usually be for me a foundation brush, this is from It Cosmetics, um, which was sent to me, FYI. Um, but I got this little mini, I mean, can you see that already? It's like, I've seen the trend for like glass skin, and I get it because that's kind of what I'm achieving or looking to achieve when I'm buffing on um, like one of these sheeny, I feel like it's gone on whew, like that, big time on that side. Um, when I'm trying to buff these in and kind of get that sheen, that is kind of the look that I'm trying to achieve with this. It is that kind of glass, like I don't want it to be frosty. I don't want any glitter or sparkle. I just want Oh, wow, glow, amazing. I'm also putting it on the end of my nose. Who even am I? I don't know. But I love it so much. I think it's so pretty. It's a bit much right there. Oh, man, it is just beautiful. And once I've put that on, I mean, number one, buffing it in, game changer, because I used to always apply the same kind of brush, either this one or I'd have, where is it? A little tapered one. This one's from Max, someone asked me the other day. I've got this for an outlet, I've no idea what it's called. Everything's rubbed off it. What does it say? 165. Um, so this little tapered one I used to use all the time, which I still would if I was using a frostier highlight, but I way prefer that kind of buffy thing. I don't know if I saw that somewhere, must have. I don't think I would have made that up. I'm not, I'm not great with these things. Um, but I love it and that was a total game changer. And then my blush I put on top of this. So just a little bit. Now I have just ordered, no I haven't, that's a lie. I have just put in my cart I'm waiting. Boots is apparently getting um, The Ordinary at the end of this month. I'm very, very excited about it. Apparently the 31st of July it's going online. So a bunch of you told me that I needed to try The Ordinary Glycolic Acid, which I mean, I've, I feel like I've tried loads of glycolic acids and, and I'm in, and they don't have to be expensive. Um, but so many people said The Ordinary specifically that I thought, okay, I need to go and place an order with The Ordinary. And I had a few things that I would like to repurchase that I liked when I've um, tried them before. Um, so I was doing that and then I swear like a minute later, like before I placed the order, I had, um, I go back in with the foundation brush just to like blend when I've gone a bit overboard. 
got an eyelash and again I swear I'm asleep. Um, I think I've gone a little bit overboard. I kind of use it to blend it out a little bit. In case you're wondering what I'm doing. Yeah, I saw almost immediately something on my Instagram. Someone said that it was coming to Boots. I was like, whoa, hold your horses. Because there's already some things that I wanted to buy from Boots. I want to get the Star Moon Dust. There's a Moon Dust eyeshadow from Urban Decay that I used to love. Um, and I was thinking about it the other day because I'd pulled out some stuff that were little sparkly things. Things that I like as a bit of a sparkly overlay to other products. Because I'm really anti-fallout. But I like just a veil of sparkle on the eyes. And I remembered Moon Dust or Stardust. What did it used to be called Stardust? I don't know. From when I used to work at Urban Decay. Um, and the, the packaging was so cool. It was like a little spring release thing. Now it's different. Now it's just like the rest of the eyeshadows. But I had that in my car. I had in my car one of these brushes. And then I found a kit. I think it was going to say it was £10 for one or it was £20. It came in a kit. It had one of these. It had three eye brushes. And it had one of these and I was like, okay, I'm going to get that instead. And now I'm waiting to put some more stuff in um, from The Ordinary. So that is information you didn't need to know about my shopping habits, but that's what's happening. And so what I was going to say is I've needed to get another one of these for ages because I use it for so many different things. I use it for powder, I use it for blush, I use it for bronzer. Not ideal to be using all of those things in one go because it gets a bit like muddy. Not ideal. That's my brush that I have to wash the most often. So this is basically my base as is. Um, I'm actually going to do the spritz again. It's a very, very hot day. It's going to be a long one. I'm going to my friend's house. It's karaoke involved. Um, and then before I finish, I'll just kind of repowder the areas where I feel like I'm going to get the most shiny. So that's my base. I am going to do... Um, I'm actually not going to do anything on my eyes because tend to not. But I am going to do liquid liner. Oh, what am I going to do on my eyes? Okay, I'm actually going to do a little bit of eyeshadow and liquid liner. This is kind of like, I'm using the um, Urban Decay, what is this called? Eye primer, eyeshadow primer, primer potion, in Sin. Do they even still make this? I've had this forever. This is just like, <laughs> it's just you looking inside my whole mind of like do I really need to throw these things away probably not definitely yes but I'm just not if it's still working it doesn't smell weird I'm only using it on my own eyes I really don't care so I'm going to use um satin taupe Am I going to use satin taupe? Yes, I am going to use satin taupe. Why am I asking myself? I'm not going to use satin taupe, that's why. I'm going to use Urban Decay Smog, because it is my favourite, and this is a favourite video, right? What I like about that Sin um, Primer Potion is that it kind of gives you a base, number one, and it's like a shimmery base, which is nice because it's a shimmery product, but it also, like, I've taken it up here, and so already... There's kind of a, a blend between my skin and the products that I'm applying. Apparently I wasn't filming. Do you know what? I should have known I wasn't filming because it went so well. <laughs> so I've just done an outer wing. Um, the idea of the outer wing for me is that my eyes are quite hooded to begin with. I really do struggle with a wing and if I just do a slight one on the outside it doesn't seem to be quite as difficult to make it even. I mean on this side, it, when I relax my eye, it always looks crazy. So I have to be expressive and talking all of the time with my eyebrows raised in order for them to look good, which I'm not. But um, I do this to preserve a little bit of lid space. So because, again, my eyes are quite hooded, if I do a full, heavy liquid liner, which it ends up being most days anyway, if it doesn't work, um, then I kind of lose my eyes altogether and anything I've done with the lids is pointless. But I like this, like, slight outer wing, which I swear I did film, but I didn't, did I? Last time I did it, someone said, oh, will you please get that on camera? No. I have rediscovered a love of the Maybelline Lash Sensational this month. Oh, all-time favourite. See, when I look in the mirror like that, my eyeliner is incredibly wonky. And then when I do that, it's perfect. 33. Um, this is just the best. The best, the best, the best. I was using Benefit Roller Lash for the longest time. I talked about this in the video where I was talking about like, PR samples and like how they've affected YouTube and stuff. Um, and one of the main reasons that I think PR samples, you need to kind of pull back on them from time to time is 
that if you get one brand, even if you're not getting a tremendous amount of, of PR sample sent to you, if you get one brand who regularly enough sends you a parcel of things, then you just stop thinking about other products that you like. You stop thinking about looking elsewhere for skincare or looking elsewhere for mascara. And so I had so many Benefit Roller Lashes um, in my drawer that I never used to go and think, oh, maybe I'll try this one, maybe I'll try that one. Very rarely. Um, and I never used to go and repurchase my all-time favourite, which was this one. And I, once upon a time, I actually made a video um, comparing the two, and I prefer this to Roller Lash. And I used it for so long that I thought, oh, maybe I actually prefer Roller Lash now. And now I have this again. No, I don't. This is the best. The best. I'm just going to go back in and knock out the shiny areas. Because you can see what I'm talking about, right? That the setting spray kind of creates mega mega shine it like it has a film and so i like to just go over some places that i don't want to shine ultimately i do have oily skin and the shine will come back and i still like the kind of highlighted oops mess with my mascara then i still like that highlighted glowy look um, I've come to prefer that to the matte matte look anyway, but I, I don't want to start out looking like shiny. I don't want to glow, but I don't want to start out shiny, so I'm going to just kind of slightly do that. But I still would prefer my foundation and my makeup to remain intact and be shiny rather than be matte and it all be kind of like, mm, this is not so pretty. Last thing I want to talk about, two lip products. So, um, the Bobbi Brown Crush Lipstick in Watermelon has been a major, major favourite this month. I'm not going to wear that right now, it doesn't really go with my makeup. I'm going to wear another Bobbi Brown. Uh, these two were sent to me, FYI. Uh, the Bobbi Brown Crushed Lip... Liquid Liner? What? Liquid Lip. Um, in Juicy Date. This is... The beautiful both formulas are very very balmy this obviously gives more shine and more gloss but it's not a glossy feeling product it feels like a balm um both are really nice color payoff wise and they last really well they still need retouching but as it goes for balmy products that are not drying at all i find them to be some of the best if not the best especially the lipstick ones these I enjoyed it first, but I kept going back to those lipstick ones if I wanted a, a lip colour. And these liquid lips, I've just kind of been... I think it's since I've discovered the more nude colours that I'm really enjoying them more. I would say that with the liquid lip, because I am not, I don't wear um, a lip liner with either, with the liquid lip, I do find that they bleed slightly. So if you do have a major problem with that, which I don't tremendously because I wear a lot of liquid lipsticks, but if you do have like a big, big problem with that or you're wearing a very bold colour, it might be worth wearing a lip liner. Or maybe just one of those, you know, the invisible lip line that you can get so you can just put that on the outer line of your lips just to kind of block it. Um, but I don't, I don't really do that because I just wear the nude colours and then it just kind of, it looks a little bit fuzzy by the end of the day, but I'm not really that bothered. Um, so this is definitely a face of favourites right now. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? I think there was just a couple of products that I wanted to mention. This was a miss. I found this in my... I'm just looking at it now, I'm like, what was I thinking? I found this in my drawer. I've had it forever, I've never used it. And I saw a video the other day about um, body oil and how amazing it looked. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that. So I put this on, it's a shimmering body oil. I put it on with a brush, I felt like a professional. I had like, just all across here. And I was like, oh, it looks really pretty. And then I went out and it looked like, oh, it was horrendous. I mean, number one, full glitter. I didn't realise until I got out in the sun. It wasn't pretty, but also it kind of settled. It made my chest look old. It made everything, like it settled into all the tiny lines in my chest. And it made me look old. Like all of the skin, not pretty at all. Cannot tell you how terrible this was. I don't know how nice it would be on the legs. I still think incredibly glittery, way, way, way too glittery. So this is the Bella Mia, Aunt Bella Mianta? Bella Mianta, um, Be Bella Bronzed. Do not recommend. But if you can recommend a slightly tinted, slightly shimmery, um, I'm really looking for something for like the decollete and arms. I, I know there's one from NARS that people love. It's a lot of money. I really want you guys to tell me <laughs> if these things are worth it. So please let me know if you're still watching at this point and you have a suggestion. Um, and, oh, I'm using one thing to prop this up. The Lacora, Lacura from Aldi, the Q10. I'm still using this and really enjoying it. This is the serum that I was basically using kind of like as a light moisturiser. Gorgeous. Use it at night, use it in the morning. 
Um, really, really happy with that one. Uh, something that is considerably more expensive. I found a little sample of this. I think I got it in a beauty box or something. I found it in my drawer and I thought, oh, I used to really, really like this. This is the Ulla Henriksen Truth Serum. Um, I used this the next day. My skin looked amazing. It looked plump and glowy. And I really was like scratching my head. What did I use yesterday? And I was attributing it to like multiple other things and then I remembered I'd used this. I am halfway through this tiny sample and I'm seriously considering buying the full size. It is expensive, around the same price as that Kiehl's vitamin C that I bought that I loved. Um, it smells amazing, it smells like, you know, vitamin C products. Um, but I, I really am seriously considering purchasing this. I think it was very effective. Um, and what else? Oh, last thing, oh, two, two things, last thing almost. Uh, the Sensitive Advanced Garnier SPF 50, this is a spray. I've been using this on my bare skin and I've been using it over the top of makeup. I'm really enjoying this. I don't find that it affects my makeup or breaks it down in any way. Obviously, I'm gonna look a little bit shiny, but if I'm like going to, um, I don't know, if we were going out for the day and I've done my regular under makeup um, SPF and I know that I want to top it up, if we're gonna be out in the sun all day, I'll put this in my bag and you know, halfway through the day, I'll spray this all over my face. I do not want any more pigmentation on my face. I've had some of it lasered off, I'm going to have some more, I think, at the end of the year once we get out of the sunny season. Um, and I'm going to film it and talk you through the whole thing because I was so impressed the first time. Um, but it is coming back a little bit. It was something that she said may not be gone in one. Um, but it was so, so simple and easy. I'm going to be talking about that soon. But I am pigmentation prone, so I do not want anymore. And that is why I have that with me now. And the last thing, I am completely converted. I really, really like this particular Colab dry shampoo. I um, purchased another one. This is empty and the other one's disappeared. And that is what it is like to live with a teenage girl. So I'm gonna be buying at least another one of these. Someone told me that this is slightly different. It's got a little bit more oomph to it. The other one I never tried because it was stolen from me. Um, so that's, that's that. I've just realized my phone case and this match. How crazy is that? So anyway, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I always get, on my first video, I always get like, a little bit more energized by the end of it. It's the talking, it's the extrovert in me. Um, so if you're still with me, then you put up with the rambling, slower first half of me. And now you deserve the crazy half of me. I'm gonna film some more videos now and I'm gonna seem like I'm totally off my head on caffeine, but I'm not. You've just filmed a video. Every time I'm going out, the same things keep happening. New boys, same tricks.